An almost fully laden freight train headed north towards Glasgow is travelling through a busy work site and is well over the permitted speed limit in broad daylight. Track workers have no idea the 15,000 tonne near half mile long behemoth is in trouble and heading right for them. Realising the collision is imminent, the driver applies full emergency brakes and takes refuge behind the second seat. What happens next is one of the most surprisingly destructive accidents I have read through whilst researching these investigations. Welcome to episode 3 in the series Off the Rails and this is the very true story of the Class 66 Logan train collision. Scotland occupies the top half of the United Kingdom, covering the northern third of the island of Great Britain. Mainland Scotland has a 96 mile, 154 kilometre border with England and is otherwise surrounded by the Atlantic Ocean to the north and west, the North Sea to the east and the Irish Sea to the south. It also contains more than 790 islands, primarily made up of the Outer Hebrides and the Northern Isles. Most of the population, including the capital, Edinburgh, is concentrated in the central belt, the plain between the Scottish Highlands and the Southern Lowlands. The landscape of this area is breathtaking. The highlands are generally mountainous, the highest elevations in the British Isles are found here and were shaped by powerful glacial movements during the last ice age, sculpting a majestic territory, and is home to one of the most famous UK urban legends on the giant Loch Ness and what's said to live beneath its frigid surface. The route through this impressive country is part of Network Rail's Scotland route. The railway comprises of mostly two tracks, up and a down line, both main lines, and is known as the Glasgow South Western Line and connects Newcastle upon Tyne, Stranraer and Glasgow, a line which crosses the entire country from coast to coast. The train we're talking about today is the British Rail Class 66, this six axle diesel electric freight locomotive developed in part from the Class 59, built by GM Electric Motive Division. This locomotive had a huge impact on the market as it stood head and shoulders above the competition due to its reliability and power and efficient running costs. The unit's weight is around 127 tonnes and is powered by a V12 turbocharged diesel engine. The outside is over 21 metres in length or 70 feet. Its design also incorporated General Motors version of a self-steering bogey radial truck for American usage, designed to reduce track wear and increase adhesion on curves. These locomotives were shipped at a rate of 11 per month into the UK via Newport docks until the order was completed in December of 2001. After unloading, EWS engineers simply took off the tarpaulin, unblocked the suspension and finally, as each one was shipped with water and fuel, simply connected the batteries before starting the engine and handing the vehicle into service there and then. The ability to start up the 66 on the dockside and drive them under their own power to the depots to enter service was nothing short of a revelation compared with many other BR locomotives, particularly the BR Class 60. Although sometimes unpopular with many rail enthusiasts, even labelled the Red Death due to it causing many older types of mostly British built locomotives to be made redundant, the Class 66 offering high reliability and lower running costs helped rail freight to remain competitive. Speaking of labels, feel free to drop the other nicknames in the comments below if you're aware of them. With that said, it's 1,850 kilowatt or 2,480 horsepower and much larger fuel capacity and fuel efficiency was highly desirable and firmly stamped its mark in the rail history books. And on this day, it was hauling 36 two axle coal fish or ballast wagons that stretched out for around 349 meters. To put that into perspective, that's more than three football fields in length if laid end to end. The train, the 6K07, is the 917 service from Carlisle Yard to New Cumnock. The train is in full roll going condition with no reported faults or technical issues and leaves 12 minutes early. As there's no passengers on board, there's no minute by minute strictness regarding timetables. The relevant people are advised further up the line and everyone is aware of this and the train sets off towards its destination. 
The driver on the day was based at Freightliner Heavy Hall's Carlisle Train Crew Depot. He had 23 years experience of driving trains. He held the required competencies to drive that class of locomotive. He also held the required competencies to drive over this route, which he did frequently with various types of freight, including coal, ballast, and was familiar with driving freight trains in work sites and possessions. If you're wondering what the word possession is doing here, it's rail terminology for when a section of track is required for maintenance and trains cannot run on it. It's handed over by the operators to the engineers who take possession during the maintenance period. This Saturday would see the train delivering ballast and sand to a possession where a section of line near Logan is in the process of being repaired. Of the train's 36 wagons, 32 are filled with sand and ballast and the first four are empty to remove spoil and unwanted waste and materials. With this load and length, the maximum speed would be 60 miles per hour or 97 kilometers per hour. In total, there are six of these units to keep materials flowing in and out of the work site. The destination is a possession in the hands of the engineer team of both lines between Newcomnock and Kilmarnock. The journey's uneventful so far, there's no need to stop at any of the stations en route. This is a straight through run to the station at Newcomnock, where the engineers are guarding entry to the work site. The weather on the day was beautiful, a clear dry day with broken sunshine in the late summer. The scene through the cab windows would have been a sight to behold, a landscape in full bloom the hillsides and farmlands filled with roaming cattle and the forests at their brightest colours, wooded areas boasting all their leaves as the sun dazzles from the rivers and streams. A perfect day for working outside or a lengthy train ride through the beautiful Scottish countryside. The only thing clouding the horizon on this day was some bad practices within the industry which would cast a dark shadow further down the line. The train reaches the nominated holding position, being the NC12 signal, just before Newcomnock station, as permissions will be needed to enter the possession from the engineers. These permissions are granted and the train enters the worksite zone, gently rolling down the line. As the train left early, it's already ahead of its scheduled arrival time, so there's little to no rush. Although as the speed increases, an oversight on the speed restriction is overlooked. The mammoth 15,000 tonne train is only travelling at around 30 miles per hour but on a restricted 5 miles per hour restriction of the line. When turning the curve, the driver is presented with a picture that does not meet his mental model and the previous freight train still occupies the tracks. The stationary train, the 6K06, is identical to the one on approach, 6K07. It has the same class 66 locomotive and 36 coalfish wagons behind it although many of them empty, with only the locomotive brakes applied. At 11.11 and 05 seconds, the driver made a brake application, and the brake pressure recorded on the train data recorder fell from 5 bar to 4.3. This was 200 metres from the point of collision. Four seconds later, the driver made a full emergency brake application, whilst travelling at 33 miles per hour, 53 kilometres per hour. This was 156 metres from the point of collision this being more than five times over the permitted restriction. But it's too late. Shortly after this, the driver got out the driver's seat and braced himself behind the seat on the right-hand side of the cab as he realised a significant collision was unavoidable. At 11.11 and 20 seconds, the train 6K07 collides with the rear of the train 6K06 at a speed of 28 miles per hour, 45 kilometers per hour. However, the brake cylinder pressure on the locomotive has still not had enough time to reach its maximum value. The locomotive and the leading seven wagons derails, the inertia of the full 15,000 tonnes ripping through the parked train like a relentless snowplow, shunting it forward as it does so. In seconds, the rear nine wagons are derailed, pushed left and right off the rails as the 6K07 barges its way down the line. The approaching train continued to travel for 11 seconds after colliding with the train 6K06. The 6K07 locomotive continued to travel a further 78 metres before coming to a rest. The 20th and 21st wagons towards the middle of the 6K07 also derailed after overriding each other. The locomotive and 7 wagons from the train 6K07 and 11 wagons from the train 6K06 were derailed. One wagon came to rest across a minor roadway. A total of 19 vehicles have left the rails in one form or another.
An accident that happened at 30 miles per hour has created a devastating carnage across both tracks, rendering both lines unusable for purpose. The investigation that followed discovered that there was some underlying practices that speed limits were not always being abided to in worksite possessions, and closer monitoring of these speeds in these areas should be monitored. And as some kind of twist in faith, nobody was seriously injured and everybody walked away, although badly shaken from the devastation left on scene. We now have a list of all new and existing subscribers at the end of our videos, so if you'd like to see your name on the list, it's free to subscribe and click the all on the notification button. That way YouTube lets us see who has subscribed and we'll be happy to add you to the credits. I hope to see you further down the line, so until then, keep it on the rails.